welcome back to the game dungeon. Today we're looking at Mabus. Mabus? I'm not even sure how to say this. Mabus. 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 Mabus it is. This is a first person sort of adventure game. Now before we get too far into this, let's take a look at the box cover here. Whoa, something's happening. We have a blue minotaur thing in your face, a blade that looks sort of like the one from Krull, spiky vines that form a hand, blood dripping off the tidal blades, and it might be hard to see here, it also says the ultimate PC video game. That's a good bit of trivia. If you had asked me yesterday what the ultimate PC video game is, I wouldn't have an easy answer for you. I would have guessed Ultima. Now we know. And finally, a three CD game. Now this came out in 95, so a game that had three discs was still impressive by itself. The assumption was any game that big must really have something going for it. It wasn't cheap to put that in the stores. And if that's not enough, I think we have another game on our hands where the ending has never been documented. So let's see what's in store. Well, we start off and we have a slow approach to an island while we get the opening credits and some music. Let's jump right into the music since we have some time here. Now, I'm a fan of scores from the 80s and 90s with good synthetic elements. And if I were to hear this theme in a movie, my first thought would be this sounds like it's a sci-fi B movie. Not necessarily terrible, but not that great either. This is an easy example, but if you hear the Terminator theme, even if you know nothing else about the movie, you can tell this has some soul to it. Or hey, Short Circuit! Great robot music. We have something special going on with this thing. It never hurts to open your game with good music, but that's not quite what we're doing here. Anyway, to speed this along, we make it to the island and a robot is parachuted in. And here's the menu. This one is a little unconventional as we have a robot preview. I guess this is a big enough deal to stick it right in the main menu. Why not? And below that, we have a bad sign already. Game duration. We have one to two hours. I really don't like this. If a game wants me to hurry, it should get a monster to chase me or something. Not give me a hard time limit. See, some people will argue that this was a necessary experimentation phase in games of what worked and what didn't. Well, no, I'm saying that ship already sailed. Again, this is a first person adventure game, sort of like Myst. Hey, wouldn't Myst be more fun if we added a countdown timer to the game so the player had to hurry up? I'm saying Myst because that was a pretty famous game by 1995. Sold six million copies. So if you were going to make changes to that formula, it served as a good point of comparison to see whether it's more or less fun. Timers. All right, I'm going with the maximum time limit, I guess. Let's start the game. Good day. I'm Admiral Terence Jefferson in command of Special Operations Pacific. You can call me TJ. A grave situation has come up and you've been chosen for this mission because you are the top person in your field. This guy goes on for over two minutes talking in this very calm and sedative voice. I feel like he would have made a better psychologist than an admiral, but whatever. In a long-winded way, he tells you there's a radioactive disturbance on a secret island with mutants on it. And you have to go in and contain it, otherwise it could spread to the American West Coast and Australia, maybe the world. It won't actually be you going in though. Instead, you'll be piloting a drone. That's what we saw in the intro video. And that's it! Let's go! Whoa! Look at this HUD! Jesus, what is this? What's that green bar for? Is uplink important? What's POH? I'm getting overwhelmed! Abort! Abort! Self-destruct! Don't give up now. We're depending on you. Okay, okay, I'll cancel. That's actually a nice touch that they give you a chance to reconsider if you really want to kill yourself. So I can turn around and go nowhere. If I turn around again, I can go forward. So I move forward a couple screens and, uh-oh, what's that? Uh, laser, laser, ah! I was clicking on it, nothing happened. Oh, damn. I guess this doesn't bode well for the mission. Ooh. The 
robot has been destroyed. The island has been destroyed. Soon, the world as we know it will be destroyed. Oops. Excuse me. I'm leaving to be with my family. Wow, they're not downplaying the significance of my screw-up, are they? Now, this can't be the first game to do this. But I have to say, this is one of the shortest transitions I've ever seen in a game going from making one mistake to the world ending. Oh, you didn't shoot the first monster one minute into the game? That's it. The whole world is dead. Good job, asshole. You've killed us all. I hope you're happy with yourself. Oh, and notice how the timer continues to count down during the credits. So that's Mabus. The game's over. I guess we're done. I'll go ahead and quit. So really, the... Oh, a slot machine. Okay, that's weird. If three evil blue aliens appear, you'll be eligible to win Microform's complete CD-ROM collection. Okay, let's spin it. Big money, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's interesting. This game motivates me to want to quit the game more. So let's do it. Ah, oh, No good. Try again. Better luck next time. I can't say I've seen this in a game before. Perhaps... Oh, I did it! I won! I won! Oh my god, what now? I could be the first of 100 people to return the consolation form. Ah. And I get such classics as music game, trivia CD, and 24 hours something assistant. Ah. Yeah, okay, I'm feeling less like a winner now. Plus, something tells me this contest may be over. That is one downside to playing games over 20 years after the fact. But who knows, the company is still around. Best I can tell, they started off as a media production and printing company, got into games later, but then stayed with media production. That would be sort of like if Nintendo went back to making playing cards. See, look, if you go to their site, you can buy a USB drive shaped like a hockey stick. Now's a good time to mention this is a Canadian game. Okay, so maybe there's more to this game than just watching the Earth blow up after two screens. If I could figure out how to kill that monster, I think I might have a chance. Let's consult the manual. Oh, I'm sorry, there is no manual. Now, once upon a time, I did have a copy of this, and I'm pretty sure it did have a manual that came with it, but I didn't commit it to memory, and it's since fallen prey to the ravages of time. But surely somebody posted it online, right? No, nobody did. It's not up anywhere. But this is not a Commodore 64 game, so that means I still have a chance to try and figure out how this works. I'll be using the time-honored method of just hitting buttons and hoping something happens. Well, after multiple deaths to animal mutilation, I figure out that it's not about aiming so much as clicking on the screen at the right moment. Kind of like Dragon's Lair. This is probably so the game had time to load the right animation video off the CD. Now let's try it out. Fuck yeah, now we're cooking with lasers. Actually, best I can tell, all your weapons do the exact same thing on all enemies, which is kill them. The toxin gives off a cloud and the missile reduces them to polygons. But let's be real, the lasers are the best. They saw their heads right off, what's not to like? Your laser charge is almost empty. <sighs> Use it wisely. Oh, quit being such a downer, Admiral. Can't a man enjoy his work? Anyway, being able to defend myself opens up a lot of the game. There's a lot of things to see on the island. The swamp, some sort of ancient temple, an airfield, a rickety bridge, some ruins. Along the way, you have multiple enemies looking to kill you, occasional cryptic puzzles, and dozens of ways to die. Seriously, if you go three or four screens in the game, you're risking death. It almost reminds me of a board game with a spinner on it, where one of the options is die. Another thing that may happen is you have to swap CDs once you go past a certain zone. I like how the Admiral breaks the fourth wall here and tells me to put the disc in. Insert data disc number two. Now here is a benefit of playing this game 20 years later. Not only am I running this game off of disc images so everything loads immediately, but I splice them all together into one big image, so I don't even have to swap. Ha! After a while of walking around and looking at things that look like they could be puzzles but aren't, 
I'm mostly just dying in this game. The Admiral likes to pop in to advise me not to die. Do not follow that path. I repeat, do not follow that path. Although sometimes he warns me against things that won't kill me. We are not sure that the bridge will hold the weight of the robot. We advise you turn back. Our satellite has detected a life form around your position. Be ready to fire. It feels like everything is random. Why give me advice at all if there's a random chance of it being good or bad? <laughs> now again, 90s adventure games almost never play fair. So after getting lost in the jungle long enough, I decided to break down and look for a walkthrough. Well, I find one from 2008. Looks like I'm not the only one who's playing games this late. We didn't get a manual, but we do get a walkthrough. And a map too. I'm glad because the navigation on this was a bit of a mess where you might go north to end up facing west. You know, even though I didn't use it much, Rama had a built-in compass for navigation. I could have really used that in this game where I'm in the thick of a twisting jungle rather than empty alien corridors. Anyway, this helps tremendously. I like to partially judge adventure games by how badly I need their walkthroughs since I almost always end up needing one because some adventure games, I would never, ever figure out what to do. I would die an old man before I solve some games on my own. Well, after looking at this walkthrough, I'd say that Mabu's appears to be beatable, but it would take a long time and be really not worth it figuring it out on your own. No regrets. Well, it looks like part of the reason I was having trouble was because there was a secret entrance with critical information. Also, these alien keys that I need are randomly distributed around the game, sometimes in dangerous areas. More on that later. I will say the level of detail in this walkthrough is impressive. For example, the author figured out that a yellow alien that you have to come in contact with in order to progress will spawn at a certain point, but sometimes it won't happen in the same game and you have to leave and come back later. And sure enough, I had to come back to this spot in the swamp three times before it triggered. That is not great design for an encounter you have to find. Anyway, the alien gives me a thing, and the Admiral comments on how it's a translator. A lot of people think that the alien apparatus is a translator of sorts. I like how they know what all these things are, except when they don't. We don't know what this item is, or what it's made of. We do know that it seems to be an electronic device of some sort. It could be a weapon, a key of sorts, or even a computer. Other highlights of this walkthrough are how blue aliens will rob you, but only if you face rooms at a certain angle. So remember, you can't get robbed by blue aliens if you don't see them. Now I should mention, this is a pretty straightforward walkthrough. It's not full of commentary or sarcasm, but the author goes out of his way to mention this part. Note, if this is the first key you pick up, Admiral Jefferson will get as far as saying, we don't know, then you sink. You can finish his sentence with, when to shut up. We don't know what the Thanks, Admiral. Due to your poor timing, everyone dies. While spending time with your family, be sure to mention how it was you that killed them. 2,000 hours of testing didn't indicate a problem here? As much detail as this guy put into the walkthrough, if he is going out of his way to criticize something so starkly, it must be pretty bad. <laughs> okay, the missiles are good too. So with the help of the walkthrough, I navigate the Egyptian temple, which is kind of weird since this game takes place in the middle of the Pacific. Some of the sculptures move, but only when I move. I like how we have a mystical portal that could lead anywhere. But instead of taking me to another dimension, it just takes me back three screens. Okay. We then exit the temple, and I swear the Egyptians use the same sound effect for their doors as Doom does. On the rest of the island, we get more monsters to kill. Yeah. A volcano. The volcano is about to erupt. I strongly advise you do not continue on the path. Yeah, thanks, Admiral. That never would have occurred to me. And then on to disc three. Ba -ba -bum. Oh, what's this? We cannot save on disc three. This is another one of those odd decisions. 
I guess that raises the suspense a bit, and it's not such a big problem since I can save two-thirds of the way through the game or even come back to the disc two part of the game and save again. But I don't know what to think. This just threw me off. You have encountered the shattered hull of a World War II Japanese destroyer. We have confirmed that the ship was badly damaged by U.S. aircraft and must have run aground on this reef. Okay, is that important to the plot? Or anything? So the other half of the island is mostly just a bunch of jungle, but what's this? A UFO and my favorite line in the game so far. It seems you've come across an alien spacecraft. Now things are beginning to make sense. More later. I love how casually he says this. There's no surprise in his voice whatsoever. Ah, of course, now this all makes sense. Typical aliens. For some reason, I keep imagining the president convening with his top military staff about some sort of armed conflict, looking over some satellite photos, then bam, Admiral Jefferson steps up and says, ah, an alien spacecraft. Now this is beginning to make sense. It would be perfect. This actor should go down in history for this line. And remember, he said more on this later. I can't wait. Anyway, he's right. It is an alien spacecraft. And I get part of the alien code, which the walkthrough says I need. And here is where I run into a new problem. I need three alien keys for a door I need to open later. I have two of them. The walkthrough states that the last one I need shows up in one of three places. Well, now let's talk about the randomization of the game. This last key is in none of those three spots. I checked over and over. The walkthrough is wrong. Not that I blame the creator. I'm sure it's an honest mistake. He already went above and beyond creating this walkthrough in the first place. He probably wasn't aware of this particular alien key randomization algorithm that my particular game happens to be using. So since it's not there, this leaves me with one of two options. First, explore the entire island from every angle. It's not enough to just be in the same grid block. You won't see the key unless you're in exactly the right position. Now this is not my preferred option because not only do I have a timer running, but the key could be in another place that will kill me if I stay there too long. Or, or, the key may not even exist this time around. I would not put it past this game to sometimes generate a playthrough that you can't beat, either due to a bug, or hey, maybe it's just a way to pad out the length of the game some more. Well, I'm a believer in cutting my losses when they're bad enough, so that leaves me stuck with option number two. Start a new game so I can roll the dice and get a better alien key randomization. All my saves are useless now. <sighs> Let's go. Alright, so this time I have the key. The only way I could get it was to get mugged by the blue alien, but the walkthrough says that's okay this late in the game. You've made your peace or something. I don't know, so let's go to the big door. And we are greeted by non-stop alarms from my robot about radiation, EMP waves, and alien energy. Wow, I really appreciate this slow-ass sequence while these alarms keep going off in my ear. Ugh. Okay, I'll spare you. There's no reason for all of us to suffer. Although, I want to emphasize, this does not go away once I open the door. Oh, a boss! Let's do this. Fire! 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 No! I hit the button! I hit the fire button! This stupid game only detects that when it wants to! And I can't reload my save! I have to go back from this too! Ah! Okay, fingers crossed. I'm doing nothing differently. I'm just more paranoid this time. Fire, fire, fire! Yes! Eat lasers, motherfucker! Your laser charge is almost empty. I know, I know! Come on! So I make it to an alien device and these damn alarms are still going off! Good God! This is exactly what I want to hear while concentrating on some sort of puzzle! Just end it, please! Oh no, another one. I'll speed this up for your sake. Oh God, we did it. The alarm stopped. I almost feel like that was the only purpose of this game now. 
to make the alarm stop. Okay, backing up. Oh, what's this? Did I do that? I didn't press a button. Congratulations. Thanks. The situation seems under control. We knew we could count on you. In the name of the country, we are grateful. You're welcome. Goodbye for now. Until the next time. Wait, what about the aliens? You said this was starting to make sense and would tell me more later. Well, it's later now, right? Now you can explain what happened? Or maybe why my drone is getting launched into space? Hello? Okay, so here we are in space. Yep. But what's this? The Moon Patrol. Of course, of course this is to be continued. Uh, so there's the ending. I'm sorry. I'm glad you're here to share this with me. Getting invested in a game, then getting an ending like this to stew in by yourself helps shorten your life. I mean, look at this. Oh, hey, did you notice there's no other music? One theme for the entire game. That's great. Oh, I'm a double winner. You know what? They say I could be the first of 100 people to beat this game. I think that could be true. I thought about blurring out my victory code, but you guys can have it. That's my gift to you. All right, awards time. This sure inspired some. First award. Best Exit Screen Slot Machine. I'm not big on slots, but like so much about this game, I don't know what else to think of this. Next award. Blue Aliens Bad, Yellow Aliens Good. I'm glad they sorted that out. And the final award, I'm sure some of you saw this coming, the ultimate PC video game. It says it right there on the box. How can you argue with that? Mabus is a game that leaves me walking away confused. Like, what is Mabus? The game literally does not say that word once. Why were the aliens here? What is this blue minotaur thing? You probably thought that was the blue alien that robs you and blows up at the end, right? No! Look here on the slot machine. That's obviously the teal alien. We never see this thing and it looks rad. What happened? Why does nothing get explained? The more I think about it, the more I realize this game needs yet another award. So here it is. Best story by a six-year-old. It has everything thrown in and nothing to tie it together. Here's how I imagine the story pitch went down. <clears throat> okay, so you're a super soldier who controls a robot and your robot has toxic darts and lasers and missiles and the Admiral tells you what to do and he sends your robot to an island that doesn't show up on any map. The island of Alora Tora does not appear on any regular map. And you go through the jungle and mutants attack you, but you shoot them with the laser and blow their heads off. Then you go through a swamp with alligators and there's an old bridge and a temple that was built by the Egyptians. The hieroglyphics in this temple bear a strong resemblance to Egyptian hieroglyphics. And a yellow alien gives you a translator, but the blue alien takes it away again. But you leave the temple, and you go to the volcano and fight the pterodactyl. And then there's a big shipwreck, and then you open the secret door that's radioactive, it has alien energy, and you punch in the code and stop the radiation and save Earth. And the Admiral says you did a good job. But more aliens are coming from the moon. I want ice cream. Oh, I didn't get a target lock. Where'd he go? Is he gone? Oh no, get off! Stop, stop, no!